Over the last few months, we've been looking at the most recent Flat Earth documentary, Level With Me. Now, if you're interested in the debunkings of the first two documentaries, I'll leave the link for the supercut versions of those in the description. Today, though, we plow on with this one and it just keeps getting worse and worse. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Okay, on with the show. And as I stated earlier, this is part five of the debunking of the Flat Earth documentary, Level With Me. Now stay with me because this part is probably the worst part yet. Now we left our brave adventurers last time talking about the firmament and how there absolutely is water up there. Dear, oh dear. Take it away, team. You'll see the rocket hit the firmament explode like watery and then it will skim along the surface of the firmament. Why is that? Well because it's hydrogen, it's water. I'm not sure what they're doing but they're not flying into space. It's almost like they're just throwing it in your face. Look, we're running into a solid barrier. These rockets literally look like they're bouncing off the ocean like a boat in the ocean creating waves. Look at it, look at the footage, look at that. They're putting it in our face. It's soft disclosure. They can't just come out and say there's a firmament, we're on a flat earth or whatever else. They can't just come out and say it. They have to show breadcrumbs. They gotta show a trail of breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs? How deluded can you be? The rocket plume looks like that because of the rocket boosters. The brilliant Scott Manley thinks it's because of the slick type pintar injectors producing uneven pressure areas. Either way, we know it is not because it hits water. We know this because of the short clip I showed last week of a rocket launch taken from the ISS. So they have to boil the frog slowly. People say, well, what's under the flat earth? Because they're thinking of a disc floating in space. We don't know what's under the flat earth because the deepest hole is 7.8 miles. And while they were digging that hole, while they were drilling that hole, they were using ground penetrating radar to see what they're gonna hit next. And they were wrong every step of the way. No more rocks, no more water. They hit rocks, they hit water, right? They were wrong, wrong, wrong. And then they hit an impenetrable barrier. They tried for years to get through and they couldn't. And then they gave up. But then somehow we have a meme that shows us a cross section of the earth, the next 4,000 miles, they know exactly what's there. They couldn't get the first 7.8 miles right, but they know the next 4,000. And everyone's seen the meme of the earth with the molten magnetic core, another thing that they're laughing at us, because you can't have a molten magnet. Now I'm sure you're gonna tell us all what and embarrass yourself in the process, but let's tackle the first thing you said first. Going down 4,000 miles and knowing what exists at 4,000 miles are two totally different things. When earthquakes happen, they are detected all around the globe by seismic stations. And it turns out we get what we call a seismic shadow. Now this is because one type of seismic wave does not go through the Earth's core. Going down that far has incredible difficulties attached to it, temperature and pressure being the worst. Any magnet of any type, you heat it up and before it melts, it hits the Curie point and it loses all its magnetism. Yep, you've embarrassed yourself. The Curie point is irrelevant when we're talking about Earth's magnetic field because the Curie point is talking about ferromagnetism only. Now the Earth's outer core is a giant geodynamo which produces Earth's magnetic field because of its motion. Two totally different things. Have y'all heard about the recent claim from the heliocentric priests? They're saying that the core has stopped spinning and it's now spinning the opposite direction, which is gonna cause all this chaos. How do they know this? I just wanna know, how do they know what the core is doing if they've only been down eight miles? How, how is that possible? We've only, as humans, dug down a maximum depth of eight miles. How do they know what's 3,000 miles down? Makes no sense. Yes, most of physics makes no sense to you, matey. You see, if you actually read the study, you would know how we know this. And you would know that seismologists analyze seismic waves from repeating earthquakes over the last 60 years. What they found was a slowing of the rotation in around 2009 
and the reversal after that. If you look at a magnetic field on our ferrule cell, you have something called the inertial plane or the block domain wall. That would be where we reside. We live within a magnetic field. And you can only go so far down before you're actually going to have the reciprocation of that energy or that magnetic field. We know the deepest hole ever dug is around 7.8 miles, which seemingly correlates to the deepest uh, area in the ocean, of course, the Mariana Trench. So the way that I see it is you're actually living on the inertial plane within the magnetic field, which actually then begins to make all celestial phenomena fit perfect within the toroid. And of course, this entire idea that there's this magic magma core made of nickel and iron that's spinning at a different speed than the Earth spins is a complete fiction made up of seismic activity and speculation. What a bunch of word salad. Take a breath, Witsit. And actually, the Mariana Trench is about a mile off the deepest we've ever dug. He's still going, by the way. And actually, when you look further into that, they say that that causes the magnetic field with something called convection currents. You have the geomagnetic field from the geodynamo model. And actually, you would have a symmetrical magnetic field coming from the core. As it is a sphere, you would have the same magnetic field in the north and the south. But what the evidence actually shows is that it is not symmetrical at all. And in the south, the magnetic field gets up to 30% weaker. There's something called the South Atlantic Anomaly, which shows that it 100% is not some symmetrical dynamo effect causing the magnetic field. The South Atlantic Anomaly is mainly caused by the intense pressure from the solar winds on our magnetic field. It gets stretched and squashed and actually is responsible for the northern and southern lights. And he goes on. If you actually look further into the dynamo model, there's about 50 questions that have gone unanswered. They can't even get the math to work with supercomputers. It's pure speculation that they can't get to work. And it seems that actually we are just prohibited from going too far down based on pressure mediation within a magnetic field. I can't lie, he is a master at word salad. There was a famous scientist that sent a submarine down and hit the bottom of the ocean and wasn't able to penetrate the bottom of the ocean as if there were some type of water barrier firmament. It's because of the firmament. It's firm. What, underneath the ocean? This one confuses me because we've sent submersibles to the deepest parts of our ocean. What I believe is that this is a plane and everything vibrates and ultimately we have to become masters of vibration to work through uh, the dimensions of this plane. Every This is the third dimensional plane. So that, this physical, 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 this is the physical plane. So many jokes, so little time. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, that was Zeus. Now, if we close our eyes and we envision something, our brain doesn't know the difference between a thought and actual reality. So they teach us about gravity when we're young kids because when you're a young kid, you kind of believe everything that you hear. They tell us that gravity was discovered by a guy named Isaac Newton. And by the time he was 23, he had discovered gravity, invented calculus and trigonometry. Well, no, not trigonometry, but he did discover slash invent the other two respectively. And there were other scientists thinking about gravity before Newton. They just didn't know what to call it. Well, I'm telling you right now, none of that happened. Gravity's just a theory and an excuse, really. Um, it's real simple. If there's a force strong enough to hold oceans to the planet, there's a force. We should all be stuck to the ground. Um, we are stuck to the ground, Eddie. Don't see any floating humans around much, do you? You know, the force can hold buildings, skyscrapers, tanks, ships to it, but it can't hold a helium balloon. Helium balloon just flies away. Smoke just flies. Away. Everything should be stuck to the ground like a magnet. Yes, because a skyscraper is lighter than a helium balloon, isn't it, Eddie? If there's a force, holding oceans to it. It doesn't make any sense. There is that phrase again. Once you look at gravity and you try to prove that it's real, you'll discover there's no proof of it and that there is only proof of density, buoyancy, and electrostatics. None of which can explain any natural phenomena here on Earth. Electrostatics is a proven thing. We all know that a positive and a negative will attract towards each other. So the Earth has a neutral or negative charge Everything above it has a positive charge and it is attracted to it. Everything that exists is electric. There's not one thing that exists in the entire world that is not electric. Actually, neutrons have zero electrical charge and objects can be negatively charged. And of course they don't float away, 
which completely destroys that theory for you. It's actually the unifying force that keeps everything here, holds everything together, and everything seeks equilibrium based on that. So everything's trying to find a state of rest based on its electric phenomena or its electric nature within the environment that we exist within. And then when you start to look further into it, you find out that on the smallest scale, electrostatics is significantly stronger than gravity is even claimed to be. Very true, but it's only strong at a very, very close proximity. Magnitude's greater, 10 to the 36 power to be specific. So everything, simply put, everything that exists is electric. Everything that is falling to the ground or not falling to the ground is seeking equilibrium based on electrostatics. We can actually test this. We can use something called a corona motor and whenever we manipulate electrostatics we can make things levitate. We can make things go up or down and we can actually change how fast they go down. We can also manipulate the weight of an object simply by manipulating electrostatics. And of course that's how science actually works is you do an experiment that shows you what the cause of the effect is and you can manipulate electrostatics and cause the effect of downward acceleration commonly referred to as gravity of course i've never seen a test that manipulates space time and you will never see that it doesn't exist well done you've given a balloon an electrostatic charge which overcomes the force of gravity now that doesn't mean you can discount gravity because when you turn that machine off the balloon will fall again Everyone thinks that the reason things fall is because of gravity, but actually everything that exists is electrostatic. So whenever things go to the ground, they're seeking equilibrium. So they go find their balance on the ground where their charge disperses or spreads out in through the ground. So we have positive charge in the air. We have negative charge on the surface of the earth or on the ground, which is why it's called grounding. And then we introduced positive charge and then it went back down to the ground to seek equilibrium. This shows that that's actually what objects do when they fall to the ground. They go to the ground because of the electric forces and they seek equilibrium on the earth. If that were true, then every single airplane on earth would fall from the sky. They are overall positively charged. But let me guess, the lift generated from the wings overcomes the force of the charge difference between the Earth and the plane. It's fine though, because in your model, anything with a slight negative charge would float away from the Earth due to those repelling forces, and we do not see that. We knew about it as in the 1950s, even earlier, and it's all been hidden because if humans were allowed uh, free energy, free movement and able to explore, we would find out what this place is. We'd find out our position in this world. And that's the number one thing. Why, that's, why are they hiding flat earth? Why? What's the motive? And the motive is to keep us dumbed down, not knowing who we are, not knowing where we are, not knowing the true power that we have. Okay, well what's the motive for that? Because that needs a motive too. I think we'll leave Dave there for this episode and wrap this one up so I can say we're all done and dusted for another video. There's one more episode to go on this debunk. It's been a blast, hasn't it? Um, I'm actually going to sorry to see it go and I'm almost hoping they make a fourth so we can have a go at that one too. Thanks so much for watching today, it is truly appreciated. As always, if you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and of course hitting that thumbs up uh, button too. And if you really enjoyed it, please do consider sharing it amongst your friends. I've been Simon and Dan, have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you all on Tuesday where we'll be re-enrolling into Mud Fossil U. See you then.